HTS presents the National Basketball Association tonight live from Key Arena in Seattle. It's the Bullets and the Seattle Supersonics. Tonight, the Bullets begin a tough four-game road trip that will also take them to Los Angeles on Sunday to face the Lakers. Monday, they'll be in Utah and Wednesday in Denver. But tonight, it's the Seattle Supersonics and a rematch. The two teams who play that exciting double overtime game November the 20th at U.S. Air Arena. And tonight, the Bullets and the Sonics meet again. The lights have been turned out for the spotlight introduction of the Seattle Supersonics. And we'll take a look at the Safeway starting lineup. The Bullets go with Rod Strickland, Calvert Chaney, George Mirasong, Juwan Howard, and Chris Weber. And for the Seattle Supersonics, they have two All-Stars in the starting lineup. Both John Kemp and Gary Payton will be starting for the West team February the 9th, the All-Star game at Gund Arena in Cleveland. Former bullet Jim McElvain, who signed a seven-year contract with his club, is at center. Percy Hawkins and Denver Shrimp round out the starting lineup. Uh, look at the numbers from the last meeting. The Sonics won at 115 to 110 in double overtime. The Bullets did not shoot well, only 38.7% from the floor. Seattle shot 44%. Free throw shooting, which has been a continuing problem for the Bullets. They made it 17 of 25, but they got great output from their bench. They had three men in double figures off the bench and outscored Seattle's bench 42 to 22. Yeah, early on in the year, you know, the bench for the Bullets was playing extremely well. Tracy Murray, Jaron Jackson, and Chris Whitney scored the bulk of those points. Actually, they scored all those points, and uh, they're going to need some help in the bench tonight uh, to beat Seattle here. Sonics lead the all-time series, 49-43. The Bullets have not won in Seattle since the 79-80 season. They've lost 16 straight here. It's a tough crowd, and I tell you, they, they back their, their, their players up, and whatever happened out here on the floor, they're with them 100%. They're, they're a great six-man for the Super Bowl. This is the first of five straight home games for Seattle on Sunday. They'll play a nationally televised game against Michael Jordan, the Chicago Bulls, and I know George Carl has cautioned his team not to look past the Bullets to that game. I don't think they are, because basically they played the last time with the Bullets, and the Bullets played them evenly. They lost in double overtime, and the Bullets did, but uh, they know the Bullets have a tough team, and to beat them, they have to come ready to play. There's George Carl in his fifth year as the head coach here in Seattle, the winning his coach in the history of the Sonics. Chris Whitney would use to knock that down. A familiar face or familiar head. Jay Buehler, the outfielder for Seattle Mariners. They're particularly well right now, but the Jay Buehler looks on. Uh, you know, well, you, know, you know why we're showing you the shot, because you and Jay Buehler have a hair hairstyle. Oh, yeah. No that's, hair. That's the new style. You know, they have a promotion here uh, becoming an annual thing in the Seattle Mariners games. It's the Jay Buehler lookalike. Uh, game and the people who are bald get in I think free or at a discount and if you uh, show up at the ballpark they will actually shave your head for you and it's a strange sight at the kingdom to see all these bald-headed people watching the game they like last year they had close to a thousand people who were without hair so you know if you happen to be here on Buner lookalike night or Buner buzz cut night it's actually called you could get in free think they let a brother win pardon me think they let a brother win uh, <laughs> oh hey now that, you know it's <laughs> Anybody's got a chance. I'm going to keep my ball head, though. Those guys, those, those competitions don't, don't keep their ball head. How, how would I look like this? You might lose your job now. Well. But if you want to try it before you leave us. I don't think so. I'm afraid it won't grow back. Chris Weber, Calvert Sandy, and Rod Strickland for the Sonics. Gary Payton and Hersey Hawkins in the backcourt with Sean Kemp, Jim McElvain, and Detlef Schrempf up front. And Sean Kemp really did very little. He uh, only took three shots in the first half. Well, he got double teamed almost every time. And the Bulls are doing something new. You don't see them doing a lot of double teaming, but they are tonight. Kemp on the loose for the slam. Well, anytime you break down a defense, you're going to get somebody open like that. Sean Kemp hopes that'll get him off. That would have been his third foul. Bullets turn it over. Four on two, fast break. Behind the back to Kemp. That was Kemp to do that. He's a pretty good passer. Now the Bullets will use their 20-second time out, but George Carl is still upset about that no call on your side. Hey, there's no question that George fought Hersey Hawkins on that play. 
But that lets him just surveys the floor. Finds the guy that's the best finisher on the team, Sean Kemp. Kemp beginning to get more involved in the second half with two baskets. He now has eight points. Now the Bullets have done a pretty good job of containing Sean Kemp in the first half and only with three shots. But second half got two quick dunks already. Double strip when he gets it to Juwan Howard. And Hersey Hawkins stripped the ball away. Howard is furious, raging at the official. Surprised he didn't get a technical He's going to get one right now. You better be careful. We might get another one. He's going to get another one. He's gone. Juwan Howard gets thrown out. Jim Clark gives him two technical fouls. He's thrown out of the game. Wow. Jim McElroy and his former teammate trying to restrain him. Now Jimmy's out of the game as well. Jim Lanham is going bananas now. He may get thrown out as well. I think he's out already. And that's a tough break right here for the Bullets. Juan Howard wanted the foul and didn't get it. Now, now Lanham is gone. One technical foul has been called on Juwan Howard, so he's still in the game. Two of them were called on Jim Lanham, but he is ejected. Jimmy Lyons upset, trying to get Juwan Howard out of there. But the referee's not happy with what Jimmy's saying to him. And Jim Clark throws him out of the game. Well, Juwan Howard is still in there, but he's arguing with the officials, and Jim Lyons will have to leave. He's about as mad as I've seen either Jim Lyons or Juwan Howard get. It's a tough way to lose a coach. A close game all the way out. Bob Stack will take over. Percy Hawkins will have three free throws coming up on the technicals. Hawkins, an 82% shooter, takes the first. Well, this could really be a costly sequence as close as this game has been. Three gifts, three throws. 45 seconds left. George Carl calls out a play for Gary Payton. They go into Sean Kemp. Deadlift strip. Kemp. And a foul against the Bullets. It's on Chris Weber. Weber is furious. Yeah, Weber sends the ball out of bounds. The guy underneath had the, had the right idea. He didn't call a foul. He just thought it was right out of bounds. Sean Kemp's going to get the rebound, but Weber's going to knock it out of his hand. Well, One ref was going to call a foul, but the ref near the near the play did not. There's some really some strange calls tonight and some miscommunication between the officials on calls. Well, Chris pleading his case, and uh, they listened to him. So no foul. For a steal right away, or foul right away. Bullets need the ball. Perkins gets it into Shrimp, trapped in the corner. Wow, that's, that's a lot of ball. Knocked it off his foot. And now the Bullets will call a timeout. Look at Juwan Howard stripped the ball and it hit Shrimp and went out of bounds. The Bullets will have the ball with 18.7 seconds left. Well, they want this win. They are fired up. Yeah, Dallas Shimp's going to catch the ball in the corner. He doesn't move. He thinks he's going to get a foul, but Juwan goes in there after it. Well, it's ball. It's interesting to see if he hits his foot. Hits his leg. Yeah, that is the bullet's ball. Surprised they didn't put Big George back in the lineup here. Tracy Murray inbounds to Strickland. Out to Murray. Into Weber for the tie. Sure. This is the shot. Got a foul. And Murray fouls down the shrimp with 9.1 seconds left.
Point is jumping. Key Arena is going wild as the Sonics try to win their 32nd game of the year. The Bullets have gone cold at the worst possible time. They have not scored a field goal over the last three minutes and two. They have game called against Seattle. Sonics hoping to get a look at what the Bullets are trying to do on this play. Shaney out to Weber. Rod Strickland. Got a rough shooting night. Bullets are using too much time. Tracy Murray, it's a three! Got a foul right away. 96-95, Seattle. Wow. What Tracy a shot. Murray buries the three. The Bullets are down by only one, but there's only 2.2 seconds left. The team will not give up. And you see Seattle's defense scramble here. When Rod gets the ball, they think he's going to the basket, and he does. Moves the ball around to Calvert. Calvert finds Tracy Murray, who's wide open. You know he's deadly from there. Tracy Murray with back-to-back -back strong games. 18 against Orlando in his last game. 17 tonight. And again, it will be deadly strength inbounding the ball. Seattle leads by one. Shrimp to Kemp underneath. And he's fouled. Does the basket count? No. No basket. Are they going to count it? No, no. no. The PA announcer announced the basket is good, and the crowd went wild. But official Jim Clark comes over and says, no, the basket does not count. Foul is on Calvert Cheney, and that'll send Sean Kemp to the line with only eight tenths of a second left in the game. Even if he missed these free throws, whoever gets the rebound is going to have to just throw it down and hope it goes in. But the Bulls with no timeouts, that's all they can do. Is he better off making the first and trying to miss the second? I don't know. So it's a three-pointer, but still tied. Yeah, Actually, you know, if he misses, the three-pointer would win it. That's right. So I think the best thing to do is make these and make sure you have your points and, and go up by three. It would take a desperation three-pointer to tie it. 97-95, Seattle. Sean Kemp not having a real good night offensively. 13 points, but he has 10 rebounds and a season-high five steals. He misses it on purpose. That's game. Game, set, match, seven. Another tight game between these two teams with the Bullets fall again. And the Seattle Supersonics have now beaten the Bullets 17 straight times in Seattle. Our final score, Seattle 97, the Bullets 95.